moving on to regional economic integration. This is the theory section looking at trade diversion and trade creation and then looking at the linear model. You need to know all these models or at least you need to know what the linear model is and you'll be able to write it in the form of the essay as in context maybe in the earlier part of your essay just when you may be starting the body and I, um, to discuss what the linear model is and why you need to be able to discuss it as you will find out that for the most African countries they adopted the linear model so you'll probably bring your essays like the main form that digital economic integration has occurred is by using the linear model between countries and then you go and explain further and further, further. obviously you would word it a bit better than what I'm putting it remember you'll be writing essay on this and it will be good prep for the exam if that question would possibly be repeated or reworded or asked in a slightly different way for your exam You can go read up on all the trade organizations like the World Trade Organization and what CAT is and that. I'm not really going to worry much with that. You won't probably be asked what all these organizations are, but you can use them in some form in your essay to add maybe depth to that. I'm not going to cover most of the nations. This was covered earlier. Um, so it's important for you to just remind yourself of what the most favored nations is and what possibly some of the exception is and the most favored nations so this is your linear model or your stages of regional economic integration using the linear model the first step is always a preferential trade agreement so it's a linear model because it starts at one point moves to the next point and moves to the next point it doesn't move to one point and it spreads into three different directions or something like that or it moves from provincial trade agreement and move straight to the end process or something like that so it's just step by step by step so preferential trade agreement is usually seen as the first step you could argue the free trade area is the first step it doesn't really matter so based on the way I, I will do this we will start with preferential trade agreement so those are just where tariffs and trade restrictions are reduced on selected goods and services among members so you're not trying to reduce all your tariffs amongst all the products just for some selected tariffs and in terms of your external tariffs which is so you need to understand what internal and external is here if i if this country a and country b enters into some agreement the tariffs that they decide between them two is called internal tariffs and external tariffs is the tariffs that these countries A and B would have against other countries that's not in this agreement. So generally speaking in a preferential trade agreement in terms of internal tariffs, selected goods tariffs are altered, changed or reduced or certain services. But there is nothing done in terms of external tariffs. In a free trade area so that is the elimination of all internal tariffs so that that is for all goods. You're trying to reduce all tariffs for all goods in that sense. You don't need to discuss a million things. All you say is a, a, pre a professional trade agreement is this, one line. A free trade agreement is this, one line. Then from a free trade area or free trade agreement, you move to a customs union. And that is to do then with it external tariff so you're coming with some common trade policy you will have to all other countries not in the free trade area or free trade agreement so some common external tariff remember custom union would include would <laughs> would include um a free trade area in a sense and then you move on to the common market that's the next step in this type of linear model and that's just got to do with the movement of factors of production and goods and service. So this free movement, everything's allowed to move across countries without any cost attached to it. In essence, what is 
occurring is that all these countries are becoming one so one internal market no barriers between them almost like there's no borders between them and you move on to economic union and then there's just the harmonization of institutional frameworks competition policies and procurements maybe having a regional bank um, which represents all these countries and then and then some policy coordination mostly in terms of monetary policy and that maybe a little fiscal very unlikely and at the same time what you could find is that they might lead to one type of currency existing between all these countries and that's it that is your linear model you should be able to regurgitate just one line, keep it simple, don't be too crazy about it. In essence, you will quote PTA, FTA, Custom Union, Customs Market Economic Union, five things. And you mention one thing about it, or the most important thing about it. And if you ECS out of 25, they could easily be five to ten marks, depending on depending on what is important or our market and that depending on what I decide and somehow you have to, you have to make push this in your, your essay or discussion and that. we're just trying to explain what the model is not the main thing it's just something to show okay I do know what the learning model is I know the learning model is the most common thing being used in African regional economic integration then we're dealing with trade creation and trade diversion. So it's basically you have two countries, they imposing a tariff. So you have country C with each tariff and country B with each tariff. So under this under this scenario, for the same product we're trying to discuss here, huh? So obviously when you have no relationship with any country, when you're looking out there, it's like okay, what's the cheapest product? And you will find country B has the cheapest product. Remember, you have to take in consideration the tariff because that's what you're going to pay for importing this product from another country. So, what does that mean? You are then producing Q1 of this product and you are importing Q1 to Q3. Because at that price, Q3 is being demanded and Q1 is being supplied within your own country. And then you have to make up that. And then the idea then is okay you enter into a relationship this country C and country B for you to enter into the relationship with and it's just something you form and just maybe it's the country next to you and or you choose okay country B is actually the cheapest country and then you form a relationship with that country when you form some economic integration or some relationship with this country and it's got to do with internal tariffs between these two countries what we find in that is the tariff is removed. So now you find yourself being at price B. No more tariff being charged to you for you. So there's no more revenue going towards your government. And in essence, you move then from supplying Q1 in your economy to supplying Q0 in your economy. But demand now is at Q4. So instead of importing the difference between q3 and q1 you are now importing the difference between q4 and q0 so those triangles that you have lost to in terms of the arbiter triangles the dead weight triangles that we would have discussed um under trade policy earlier you then gain them back in terms of consumer surplus best scenario best ideal scenario then because you entered into the country that is the most cheapest and then obviously you can say, okay, at the same time you're losing government revenue because you are losing that tariff that was being charged. And you're losing, what else are you losing? Producer surplus, right? Would you gain the supply? The big chunk of 
consumer surplus you would get. But overall, the what you gain in terms of consumer surplus outweighs what you would have lost in terms of government revenue and producer surplus. A good thing, all right. And then the second scenario is you have still these two countries having high tariffs and you enter into a relationship with country B again. But in this case, country B's pricing was higher than country C's prices. But before you enter into this relationship, you will report from country C, right? Because with the tariff included that your government is imposing, they were still cheaper than buying from country B. But now you enter a relationship with country B for whatever reason, and you find now that after the tariff is uh, removed, because you enter a relationship with country B, that the price of country B now is cheaper than country C. Why so? Even though country C produces the good at a cheaper rate, you're still getting, you're still imposing a tariff on them. So their price remains the same with the tariff. But country B now, the tariff has been removed, so now their product is actually cheaper. And then you can discuss again in terms of what happened in terms of um, consumer surplus gain, what you lose in terms of government revenue, and what you lose in terms of producer surplus. Now. Yes, you are better off than you would have been in terms of you're paying a lower price than well, by entering into a relationship with country B. But if you had entered in with the right country, which is country C, which was the lowest, the, the cheapest producer of the product, you would even gain more. So this is seen as trade, trade diversion. Entering into a relationship with another country who does not supply or produce the good for the cheapest. Effectively, what you want to do is enter into a relationship with countries who produce the good. The cheapest, and then by having the tariff removed because of the sum of relationship between them, you gain quite a quite a bit more. Do you need to know these graphs? No, just understand that what is trade creation and trade diversion. The trade creation is ending to relationship um, with a country who is actually the cheapest producer, while trade diversion is ending is entering to relationship with a country who's not necessarily the cheapest producer, but entering the relation with them does mean there's a reduction in terms of prices. But you don't gain as much you would have if you have entered in with the cheapest producer of a good when the tariffs are removed. And then the final part of that section is some regional trade agreements that exist. You can look what Comisa is. It is important for your essay writing that you know one, one African regional trade agreement. You need to know one. Whether you know Comisa, whether you know SACU, whether you know SADC, whatever. You need to know one. You need to be able to discuss a little bit about it. You don't need to discuss a lot about it. So that you can quote one of this as an example in your essay writing. You know? And I don't want you to say a commissa established in 1994, 20 members, blah, blah, blah. You need to be able to say about the nature of the relationship with the goods being moved across and how successful the relationship has been. Who is the one is really the major trading partner in it? Something like that. Go read up on it. So obviously, you'll find in your notes um, the information about South Africa being the SADC and SACO that is more prominent and it will be easier for you then not to go and research further and find other paperwork and just looking at that reading it has come up so then is a the Asian organization you can read up a bit more about that is listed here it's stupid for me to quote what is on the slide and then in America there's NAFTA And yeah, it's just um, some stuff that you need to go look at. I want to waste my time there. Remember, we have covered NAFTA. 
So the example of NAP that you can use of a good free trade agreement that exists. So that was actually nicely discussed if you want to. And then the last, the reading on regionalism and the new trade theory, that is going to be self read for you. That's it. It's a very short theory on regional economic integration. Now we're going to deal more with the empirics uh, of Africa.